worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony with me. You see, a lot of people have fallen victim to the area of worshiping man. We are not to worship man, we're not to fall down to man, feed and worship man. For one, the scriptures say in the passage up, it speaks about blessed are those who are invited to the wedding of the Lamb. We are all to eat together, dine together, fellowship together, and reverence God together, not man. So when we are bound down to man and we begin to worship man, we begin to move God out of the equation. And we begin to put man as the head of God. So now, with that particular passage that we're dealing with, we have another tendency where we'll begin to worship what we'll call um, Jesus, as he said, as he said in the passage, I am also a fellow to you. Jesus also said in the scripture, which is Yeshua, some translated in the main world, some translated. But when you begin to understand that he was saying, worship no man other than the Father. So he moved himself out of the equation as well, and he began to reverence God. So as we begin to understand that, we are dealing with a dinner being served. We are we're dealing with a, 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 a particular dinner being served. The dinner represents the tree of life. So as we fall down a little further in that passage, if you can go down just a little further in that passage, pull something out. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse. Pause right there. I saw heaven standing before me, and there up here before me is a what? A white horse. A white horse. So <clears throat> the only way for your level of understanding which symbolize heaven to open up is, first of all, you must have the right diet in your system. In other words, you must be following the instruction in which God has given you, eating from the tree of life. So it's very important that you do not follow, your cough, follow the instruction of that in which you was brought up under, which is corrupt. That tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why the scripture speaks about the first Adam and the second Adam. And that first Adam if you pick it up in Genesis, that first Adam felt victim to eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God instructed him not to eat from. So here it is. Now you have this tree of life. You, you, you have the heavens opening up for a set reason. If you can go to Malachi real quick, I want you to turn to Malachi. Something in my spirit just led me to Go to Malachi because we're going to deal with this heaven opened up. So we, we want to connect all the dots. Malachi, just, um, we're going to go to Malachi and first scripture starting Malachi. Go down to around about the eighth verse. What does it say? He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children. Uh huh. And the earth and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come to strike the land with total destruction. Uh -huh. Keep going. That's four and six. Keep going. Surely the day is coming. back it up to, we're going to go there, but I want you to hold that passage because we got to recap on that. Go to 3 and 6 and 8. Malachi. We're in Malachi. That's going to be an added footnote into this particular outline. Malachi chapter 3 starting at verse 6. What does it say? I, the Lord, do not change. I, the Lord, do not change. You, see, see, God does not change. That's because Technology have changed just because society has changed within certain things. God does not change. Watch this now. I, the Lord, do not change. So is 
So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Uh huh. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees. See? Turn away from his decrees. See, when you turn away from God's decrees, the heaven is closed. Closed. The moment that you turn back to God's decrees, it opens up. So when you look at Revelation, Revelation touching based on how the standing up in the heaven stood up and there appeared for me a, a white horse. Watch this here now. That white horse symbolized something that is very important, but we, we're going to touch base here and then we're going to go back to, to that passage in Revelation 19. Chapter 19. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you. See, God say, return to me, then I will return to you. Return to me, then I will return to you. In other words, in order for you to be connected with the tree of life, you must be on the correct diet plan. Your diety, the God speaks about this with emphasis on the importance of his, his statutes, his laws, and his creed. He put the importance on what you should be eating and what you should not be eating, the importance of our diet. But we transition into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and begin to follow that diet plan, which shuts up the heavens and separate us from God. And we turn our back on God. And God asks us in this particular passage to return to me. Keep going. Pause right there and go to Revelation. I want to I want to go down a little, a little further because we're gonna push right into where we at now. Where we left off. There appears to me. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. You, you see that? <laughs> this is not a this, this, this is this is serious business. This is not a game. This is more important, more important than one getting up to arrive. To their, to their place of business and be punctual getting there. But when it comes down to being punctual with your diet, when it comes down to being punctual with your obedience, when it be punctual about being faithful to God, we drop the ball. He said, this right is called faithful and true. First of all, the heavens still open. There's a key there. Because when you're dining, that first of all, you have to be invited. And the only way to get invited, you have to be in obedience. You have to be seeking diligently the voice of God. You have to be on one accord with God to be invited to the way of supper. And once you're invited, it, it, the scriptures say, blessed are you. Then the another step, as it go down further, it says, now the heavens opened up to you. That means your level of understanding has opened up because you have act on obedience. Pause right there, and let's go back to Malachi. Now see, Malachi, is that, it's, it's a treat for you guys because Malachi is giving you, you know, see, see, this is this is what something that was led for the Spirit is who teaching through me to teach through you guys. Watch this here now. And young ladies. Uh-huh. But you ask, how are we to return? How? And look, look, look. How are we to return? This is the question they're saying. I don't know who to believe. I don't know what to believe or... I don't know if, if, if I should follow science. I don't know if I should follow the, the, the preacher. I don't know if I should follow the instructor of what came from my household. Who do I follow? How, how, how do we return? Watch this in now. Will a mere mortal rob God? Mm -hmm. well, he, look, look, sarcastic. <laughs> well, 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 I, I won't play with God. Every time you are walking in disobedient, you're playing with God. So you don't play with God when you're obedient to God. But when you begin to walk in disobedience, that's when you play with God. Uh-huh. He said, well, the immoral, there, rob God. Now, robbing now, let's, let's break down the, 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 the terminology of robbing. Robbing is face-to-face -face event. So that means you're, every day, you're face-to-face -face with God, and you're robbing God. 